Um, when you have a kid with um, something like OCD or anxiety that obviously, according to what I heard here, is shaping or in the way of having a, a healthier brain, brain that he would have been otherwise. Um, what do you think about using um, medications that will give him the opportunity of experiencing life in a positive or more positive experiences of life and then shape his life versus not using those medications and try to intervene in a way that might be in a way not, not even open for him because of the condition, the anxiety, the OCD. So what's your opinion about these things? Well, first of all, uh, you have to, I, can, I don't want to contravene or, or I don't want to talk about the medications I've been prescribed, presumably by a qualified physician and, and presumably, uh, hopefully, that's an a intelligent and thoughtful uh, source of advice that you have that are providing that to the, to the kid. And it can save a person's life. They can, it can save their bacon. It can open up all kinds of possibilities. It can do that. Medications, by their nature, are relatively crude treatments. The, you know, they, they, they're, it's one of the reasons why there has not been an important neural, n brain targeted drug approved by the Federal Drug Administration for more than 20 years. It's because the crude ways that we can manipulate it, you, that might surprise you, but it's true. And the reason that, that is is because a relatively crude chemical strategies to manipulate a brain to waken it up or, or to get it over some terrible turmoil that it's in represent a manipulation of relatively fundamental processes. And, but they can be key, you know, because you can give medicine to a person that can be so tied up in their depression and that wakening influence that that drug can have, basically by increasing the level of a chemical in the brain that arouses it and basically encourages you to get out of your room, out of your chair, out of your door, out in the world again, it can save your life, right? So I, I can't say anything negative about it. It, 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 it. it is by its nature incomplete and crude. I wrote a paper about a week ago I sent off for publication, in which I argue that this class of medicine for the treatment of these conditions by, them, by itself is too simplistic. That in the future, because we understand more and more about, and I'm expecting to get pretty strong reaction, from a medical community that fundamentally deals with these problems by, by this these kind of crude chemical manipulations. We know that in a case like OCD, there are very complex processes that are distorted. And they're distorted because the, the fact, first of all, because there are factors that have led to the obsessive compulsive disorder to start with, and then there are all sorts of consequences of its expression in the brain. And we know that uh, the, a drug can basically get, get the, the, the child or the adult back enough so that a substantial amount of self-correction can occur, but that self-correction is almost never complete. So an example is you can look in any one of these literatures. I'll, I'll, I'll cite an example that's been especially intensively studied, ADHD. ADHD, you give the medicine, and the medicine basically is a stimulant. And the stimulant basically makes the child more on the ball, and it has an immediate, generally has immediate positive impact. The child's more on the ball, everybody's happy. Six months later or a year later, there's no difference in the child. And never in the brain, when you looked at the brain of the child, in a variety of ways be, of the limitations of the brain and its operations in the face of the ADHD, is the brain changed. It still has all of the weaknesses that led to the problem to start with. It can be really advantageous to the child to be alert and sort of back on the ball again, sort of back on target and, and, and better. But still, the fundamental problems are uncorrected. The same occurs in drugs that treat depression. And drugs that treat depression, you can look in the brain a year later and you can see that it still has most of the weaknesses, most of the, most of the things that you could say distinguish it from a brain that's truly healthy are still there as weaknesses. That's why people relapse. They relapse because the fundamental weaknesses aren't dealt with by just, by just disturbing the chem chemistry in this positive way that helps you uh, live, live your life. So we have this sort of complex 
combination of effects. First of all, it can save you, and then you can do a lot on your own that can really help you. The critical thing is to give people better guidance about what they do on their own, right? So you might, uh, we might try to have a little bit of, con of a conversation about this on the, on the internet. You might write me a message, and, and I probably will try to link you to a psychiatrist that understands our science and can give you some advice about what else the kid might do on their own. The child is taking the medication. Does it, in a way, block the ability of the brain to change, or the well, brain I can change I regardless talk, of I the medication? Well, I can't say anything about that because, okay. first of all, I don't know about the medication, and it would be improper for me to say anything about it any any way. I mean, we assume that the the, the child neurologist or psychiatrist that's dealing with this uh, ch with this child is is intelligent and doing the best they can, and also is. We can assume that they're, they're applying what's called a standard of care, where that is to say what are believed to be the best practices for a kid in this, in this situation. And I can't say that they're not the best practices. They probably are. It probably is exactly what your kid should. And you, you always have, it's always appropriate for you to think about uh, seeking other advice about it. So I want to end by telling you a story. So I have a relative, um, a young girl who's the, child of someone that's dear to me and my family. And uh, this occurred about 10 years ago. And, uh, and my, this person that's dear to me called me and said, my, my daughter has these terrible problems. She won't go to school. She hasn't gone to school for, I've, not, I've, heard, this, I've heard this story before, and I've told, told them that to, to seek help in certain places. But anyway, to make a long story short, so. Two or three months later, this person call, called me and said, my daughter has, has been able to go to school now for two months, three months, and now she's, got to been she's been given all of, prescribed all of these medicines. I said, well, what are the medicines? So at this point, the psychiatrist, the child psychiatrist had given her, in order to get her basically awake to go to school, seven prescription drugs. He'd given her a, a psychoactive drug that's uh, something you take if you're schiz an active schizophrenic. He'd given her an, a, an a, 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 he, he, she was on a stimulant. She was on a, anyway, to make, I don't, don't want to go down the list, but to all of these drugs, the, the psychiatrist trying to manipulate her chemistry in a way that basically uh, uh, makes her more operationally effective. And it was obviously unsuccessful. She still wasn't going to school. So I said, well, gee, uh, I know we have a wonderful clinic. Since my, the person in, in question lived in, or in the state of Oregon. I said, I know we have a wonderful clinic here in San Francisco, and I, knew the, I know the psychiatrists and psychologists are involved. Why don't we make an arrangement for her to come down here? So we made those arrangements, and because I know these uh, people at UCSF, we came to the clinic, and they get, have a one-day examination where they look at the, at the issues that relate to this child. And at the end of the day, the, the psychiatrist who knows me said, well, would, you, would your brother want you to come and sit with us when we talk to the family, my, my, it was my brother, my wife, and their child, about the child? I said, I said uh, and I asked my brother, and he said, yes, we'd like you to be there. So I'm there in front of this panel. So there are seven professionals from UCSF in this group and, and this little family. And they said, they looked at the my brother and his wife, and they said, we don't think, the child was not, not there, but the parents were. They said, we don't think the child should be on any of these medications. So we see no reason for any of these medications. We think the child should, there should be counseling in the child, and there's other reasons why this child is in distress, but we don't think any of these medications are justified. And they said, y you, would you, and they explained this for about 15 minutes, they said, would you mind if we call the psychiatrist in Portland that's been prescribing these medications? So they call the psychiatrist in Portland, and they get him on the speakerphone. And this nice voice comes on. And the panel explain in about five minutes why they don't think that this child needs these seven medications. And the psychiatrist said, well, I think you're probably right. Mm. He said, he said, I think you're probably right. I think probably it hasn't really been successful, and I think perhaps we should try that. So that's how certain that psychiatrist was of giving this little girl seven prescription drugs simultaneously, right? So there's something wrong in Denmark. 
There is something wrong in Denmark. And we've gone about as far as we can go. That's another line from another. <laughs> we've gone about as far as we can go in manipulating brains with chemistry alone. And I think that we're sort of over the top on it. And the notion that we can, we can just keep pulling pills out of the drawer until we find some combination <coughs> that works is, uh, is not a great way to go. I mean, we have to think about supplementing that medicine with other things. So that's what I'd think about if I were you. How, how, how else can I make these changes in this child more complete and, and better? And maybe get past the medicine. Yeah. Good, good. That's a place to look, right? So have we used up our time in that? You hope so, right? <laughs> that was a long answer, by the way. It was a wonderful answer. Thank you. Thank you. It was very valuable.